Tonight, two individuals will be crowned the greatest male and female players on the planet. Lionel Messi. And the winner is Aitana Bonmatic. All right, we're switching now to football. The best FIFA football award ceremony for 2023 was held on Monday in London. Lionel Messi has been crowned FIFA Best Men's Player of the Year for 2023, the second consecutive year and third time overall he's securing the honour. Messi won ahead of Manchester City and Norway striker Erling Haaland. They both tallied 48 votes but were separated by the number of first-choice votes received from national team captains. PSG and French striker Kylian Mbappe finished third with 35 points. Aitana Bonmati walked away with the Women's Award after a stellar 2023 where she won the World Cup with Spain and the treble with Barcelona. Bonmati with 52 points won ahead of Colombia's Linda Caicedo, 40 points and countrywoman Jennifer Hermoso with 36 points. Let's take a look at the other winners on the night. We had the best FIFA women's players, we told you. Aitana Bonmati, the best FIFA men's player. You know the name, Lionel Messi. What about the best FIFA women's goalkeeper, Mary Earps? And the best FIFA men's goalkeeper, Edison from Manchester City. Then we have the best FIFA women's coach, Serena Wegman. Best FIFA men's coach, Pep Guardiola. Then we had the Puskas Award going to Guilherme Madruga. The FIFA Special Award to Marta. The Fair Play Award to Brazil, men's national team, and the FIFA Fan Award to Hugo Daniel Iniguez. So joining us now to discuss the FIFA Best Winners is our international football correspondent, Simon Evans. Good afternoon, Simon. How are you? Good afternoon, Mariah. Very well, thank you. All right, so we're talking FIFA awards and I feel as if the name Lionel Messi is no stranger to this. He has won it so many times, Simon. A lot of people feeling as if Erling Haaland was robbed. I think he was. I mean, I think Messi's won this plenty of times. I don't think uh, he would have been upset and I don't think uh, many people would have argued strongly, fans, if a guy like Erling Haaland, who scored an incredible rate in the Champions League and the Premier League, won the treble, was the outstanding footballer in, over this past uh, 12 months of, of 2023. Messi's greatness is not in dispute. That's not what people were voting for. It was 2023. And the way his time ended at Paris Saint-Germain, and then, OK, he had some good games with Inter Miami uh, and some good games with the Argentine national team. But really, he wasn't the best player of 2023. And I think he's got this award because of his reputation, because of the fact that he's the GOAT and people always want to, to respect that. Right, you say that because of his reputation, but there's a timeline, Simon, and I think that timeline has, of course, created a lot of discussion and a lot of controversy. So there's a timeline from which this award is presented based on, of course, your performances. Lionel Messi won the World Cup, but does it fall into the timeline and does the World Cup trump a treble that Erling Haaland has walked away with? Oh, yeah, I've seen some debate about this. I'm not exactly sure what FIFA's criteria was because it's the calendar year 2023, so it doesn't because it was December 2022, but it does feel like they, they took that into account. Um, now, whether that was officially the case or not, I can't actually uh, be sure about that. But um, look, a World Cup does trump lots of things, and, and as you can see on the... Uh, on the women's side, with Bon Matti being rewarded as, as Spain uh, win, the, win the Women's World Cup, that that was a factor. Um, but still, over the whole year, I don't think that trumps that. I think, you know, Messi's won so many awards, hasn't he? Ballon d'Ors and FIFA Best. Him and Ronaldo have shared it between them for as long as most of us can remember, it seems. Um, and Haaland was so good this year. He really was. I mean, the impact he made in the Premier League, which is the best league in the world, the impact he had on the Champions League. Not many teams can go and win a treble. It doesn't happen very often at all. 
And uh, that was recognised in the team that FIFA put together, the FIFA best team, which, which I think had six Manchester City players in it. But I still think I still think it should have gone to Haaland this time. And that's no disrespect to Messi. I'm not one of these people. I've seen some people saying, how can you give it to an MLS player? I don't think MLS is that bad. And I think Messi produced some great stuff here in the summer, which I was lucky um, to witness. But really, not this year. It shouldn't have been him. Yeah, Simon, on a point of... Uh clarification i saw some dates published on this award uh, that it spanned the period december 19 2022 to the 23rd of august 2023 which means that it would not include the world cup success which to me would have been the only way that we could accept uh, messi qualifying to be the the fifa best player award winner and um based on the timeline it doesn't even include much of what he did with Miami FC because he debuted for them in July. And this award yeah. closes off in, in, in August. Uh, so I guess it's the PSG stuff that he did. But I agree with you 100% that um, Messi doesn't deserve this award. And I'm a Messi fan. And I can say that without, you know, fear of, um, you know, controversy or anything. I just think that this wasn't Messi's award. He didn't have that kind of year. Having said that, though, on the best 11 squad which we had a discussion over this in our office yesterday i don't have a difficulty with him being in the best 11. yeah that's a slightly different one isn't it the best 11 um and there's a little bit of a, a sort of fantasy football element about it about putting together um an imaginary team with with great players and and how could you really argue about messi being in that i mean he didn't have a good end to his time at, at paris saint germain let's not forget he was being booed off the field at the end, which wasn't totally about his performances. There were lots of other things at play there. But um, he wasn't a great time on the field for him at Paris Saint-Germain. What he did in, in Miami um, was electrifying in that MLS League's Cup when he played against you know the Mexican team Cruz Azul and scored the free kick in the final minute on his debut um, and led into Miami all the way through that mini tournament uh, to win it. Uh, was was thrilling, was exciting, and we saw Messi at his best. We really did um, see that for a brief window, like a month, before then the injuries uh, problems and and things caught up with him a little bit. So I, I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't argue ever about having Messi in anyone's greatest eleven. Um, you know, even if even if on twenty twenty three you could argue that there should have been perhaps been other players who merited it more, but. Um, but it's the big one that he shouldn't have got, really. And, and the fact that he didn't go to London um, suggests, I don't know, maybe I don't want to put words into his mouth, but I do feel that someone like Messi, who's, who's quite a humble guy in a lot of ways, I think he would have been slightly embarrassed to have got that award, to be honest. Yeah, for sure. And I just want to go back a little bit, Simon, to how this award is voted on. Um, it is voted on by a mix of national team managers and captains, um, journalists and fans, and the voting takes place on FIFA's website with each counting for 25%. Could the issue here be um, the weighting that is given to, um, I guess, groups like fans, and I know we are journalists, but maybe even um, journalists, mm. um, and even some national team managers and, and captains who... Um, may well be voting for um, the player that they think is the best in the world as a general rule rather than the player who was the best in the world in a specific period. Because as you've all pointed out, looking at the numbers from the period the 19th of December 2022, which was right after the World Cup, to August 20, 2023, there is no way that Lionel Messi should have trumped Erling Haaland for this award. Yeah, I think it was tied on the overall voting, which yeah, I... Yeah, 48. I, um, and the fan element, you would think, would weigh heavily in Messi's favour. I mean... If you look at social media and see how many Messi fans there are out there who are very, very active and would have all logged on and voted for him. So I'm sure that helped him a lot. But I think it is a reputation thing. And when people find out who, who you voted for, I think maybe some people. I saw, for example, Christian Pulisic, the USA uh, captain, voted for Messi. And you think, oh, well, it's, you know, is there a little bit of players not wanting to be seen to disrespect the GOAT? Is that part of it? You know, and I think it could well be. 
Um, there's certainly not a giant lobby for Norwegian players uh, out there online. Um, or Manchester City ones for that map. But despite their success, they don't have that huge fan base that Barcelona and Argentina and, and Messi personally has. So I think lots of things would have come into play. But um, normally, you know, you sort of think these things, it doesn't really matter that much. But this does seem to have, have, like, devalued it a little bit, I think, this year. Yeah, in 30 seconds, Simon, doesn't it bring the credibility of the award into question, though, when you have a decision like this, at least from where we sit, that is glaringly incorrect? Yeah, I think it does. Like I said, I think it, it devalues um, this award a little bit in this year. And I think they'll have to get it right next time, otherwise people aren't going to take it seriously. I mean, you can look at some other things as well. The women's team overly dominated by, by England the, the players in the best one. Far too many Manchester City players in the, in the men's best 11 as well. Weird things. Edison, the best goalkeeper in the world, he wins that award, but then not the best goalkeeper in the best team of the year. So there's lots of things that, uh, to question about this, but I guess it's just a bit of fun at the end of the day. Mm. Yes, yeah, Simon. Well, of course, a bit of fun. We enjoy talking to you most definitely. And we'll chat with you again very, very soon. Thank you so much for your time. Cheers. All the best. Thank you. Simon Evans Day, our football correspondent. On that note, we're going to take a quick break and come right back. <laughs> Thank you.